Checkmate 227 is a large, randomized, uh, complicated study in terms of its design um, that uh, basically tests uh, nivolumab in combination with either chemo or pilumumab and compares it against chemotherapy um, in patients that have either no PDL1 expression or have at least a 1% PDL1 expression. For the patient population with over 1% PD-L1 expression, the randomization then is to three separate arms, one to one to one, AP plus NEVO versus histology-based chemo versus NEVO alone. And for the patient population with less than 1%, which is basically negative pd one expression, the randomization again is to AP NEVO, histology-based chemo, or a combination of NEVO plus histology-based chemotherapy should be emphasized that both squamous cell and non-squamous cell histologies were allowed uh, to participate, and then the rest of the criteria were very similar to other phase three studies we've seen. Again, no EGFR or out translocation, uh, no active brain metastases, and a number of other inclusion exclusion criteria that are customary. Um, the um, study ha is still ongoing because overall survival uh, is a, a, an endpoint on the study that has not been reached. Uh, but at uh, this year's AACR, uh, the primary data, sort of the top line data, uh, was presented um, in a patient population that has high tumor mutation or burden. Now, the way uh, the study was designed initially, did not have TMB as a co-primary endpoint, uh, TMB again referring to tumor mutation or burden. But as the results of several retrospective studies became available, and one, um, one of these studies was this large um, uh, phase two study called Checkmate 568, uh, the TMB cutoff of 10 mutations per megabase was shown to be a predictor of uh, uh, clinical efficacy for a combination of epilumab and nivolumab, and uh, Checkmate 227 was um, uh, uh, re-amended uh, uh, to include the co-primary endpoint of T. TMB. So Checkmate 227, again, the, the primary analysis that was done was on patients with high TMB, again, defined as 10 mutations per megabase. Uh, compared to um, standard chemotherapy, the combination of epilumab and nivolumab in that patient population showed a much better PFS and, and response. Uh, again, survival data wasn't mature enough, um, but that is something that's going to be looked at. In terms of the safety of the combination, again, we have to keep in mind that this particular regimen for epinevo um, actually was studied rather heavily as part of Checkmate 012, which actually was this uh, dose optimization type of study where different uh, dose levels and schedule of delivery of both drugs were uh, investigated in multiple cohorts of patients, came up with the, um, uh, the, the current schedule and dose that's a part of Checkmate 227. Um, from a toxicity point of view, clearly when you add epilumumab to nivolumab, you get uh, more toxicity. Um, if I recall correctly, the, the uh, percentage of patients with grades three and four, so the severe toxicity was about 25%, which is definitely higher than what you get with nivolumab alone. On the other hand, the clinical efficacy you, you get in terms of response on PFS is far better than what you get with nivolumab. So when you compare that, and this study allows us to do those kinds of comparisons with uh, chemotherapy, I think, again, any time you add a third agent to uh, you know, a platinum doublet, you anticipate to get additional toxicities, but I think most of the toxicities were in line with what you would get from a chemo combination. And I don't think they are out of step with what we've seen uh, from other IO plus chemotherapy uh, combinations that have been reported so far. Again, we're not ignoring grades one and two toxicities, um, but definitely higher rates of grades three and four with either epinevo compared to nevo alone. But again, I would say that epinevo has less of those side effects, again, grades three, four to severe toxicities as compared to nevo plus chemotherapy. Well, Checkmate 227 allowed both patients with squamous and non-squamous histology to participate. Uh, the percentage of patients uh, that had squamous histology were actually a little bit lower uh, in the study. Uh, so sometimes when you do these subgroup analysis, smaller numbers makes it difficult to make um, sort of conclusive statements about the efficacy or toxicity or whatever it is that you might be seeing. And I think we need 
larger trials to sort of differentiate uh, if there really is a difference between squames and non-squames with some of these. And I think we're going to be getting some of these common chemo combinations uh, for squamous cell patient population. Um, but when you look at the overall data, it becomes a little bit difficult to compare 227, let's say, versus Keynote 189, exactly just because Keynote 189, one chemo combination back when everybody got carbopam, everybody had non squamous histology, but in 227, there are different chemo backgrounds, and patients have squames and non squames. So I think that, again, we have to keep in mind as we interpret the results of these trials.